Oh, Father, we thank you so much for this evening. Lord, I pray that you help us to proclaim you as Savior, as the King of kings and as Lord of lords. That you will help us this evening as we get a chance to, to look back on this last year. We look back at all that you did and all that we get to say. You did that through us. You chose us to do that. What I pray that it will just bring on is an overwhelming sense of praise and adoration. This moment of worship where we are responding to you, regardless of what this night holds for us. We're responding to you in times that are good and times that are bad. We're able to look back and we can see the thread of Jesus weaving our lives, the tapestry of our lives together. And Father, as we look forward this evening. Lord, that we, we with hope and with joy and with expectant anticipation love, we dream about this next year. We're looking forward to all that you have in store, the things that we don't know, the things that we can only dream right now. And Lord, we ask that this evening that the things that we dream, it will be as your word says, that it is exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we ask or even imagine that is your dream. And so Lord, draw us together. Help us to enjoy ourselves this evening on this in-between Sunday, in-between the celebration of Christmas Day and the celebration of New Year's Day and this, this time of Advent, this time of, of, of new life in Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray it through Jesus. Amen. All right, kiddos, K through five, Mr. Joel's got some bags for you. And we're going to get to go fast because I'm seeing some sweets in there. And I don't know if they, if they got enough from grandparents and all that kind of stuff this last week. So we're just going to give them a little more. Uh, so uh, we want them to know Jesus is sweet. He's awesome. And so anyway, that's, that's what's coming their way. You guys enjoy uh, those bags. And while they're coming up and getting these, uh, tonight it is exactly what I prayed a while ago. This is a night where we get to look back. We look back at this year, and then of course we're going to look ahead to this next year. But one thing that we've got to make sure we do is as we look back, we never want to be guilty of praying throughout the year, asking God to do things, and then we miss saying thank you. We miss just saying, oh man, Lord, thank you for what you did. Thank you for the way that you were near in that time, and thank you for the way that, that you showed yourself in this other time, and thank you. And so we don't want to miss that. And then, of course, we're going to ask God for all that He wants, for all that God wants to do in this coming year. You know, but I thought that it's, this is a perfect time for us, especially this in-between Sunday. Uh, this is a perfect time for us to talk about, you know, who we are, to talk about why we do what we do, what makes us wake up in the morning and, and do what we're going to do throughout the day. Uh, that genuinely is who we are, not the, not the conversation about, you know, you ask somebody who they are and they tell you what they do for a living. That's not what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk about who we genuinely are. What made, motivates us to live each and every day. The way that we live each and every day. And what God longs to do with that. And so, so without further ado, we'll just kind of pull back. Now, I'm going to do this in a different order this time. Many of you are used to us starting with mission, vision, and values. I'm going to do it in a little bit different order. Uh, we're going to start with why we do what we do. We're going to start with that because that is the end result. That's the end goal. And so John chapter 10, verse 10, gives us the reason why. Why we do everything we do. John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that the enemy is out there longing to destroy life. Not just for people who love Jesus, but for everybody all over the planet. And so the, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come. That they, that you, that I, that we might have life and have it to the fullest measure. See, living life to the fullest isn't something that started with just somebody else. That started with Jesus. These are Jesus' words. Saying, I long for everybody on this planet. People who love me, people who don't love me. I long for everybody to be able to live life to the fullest measure. Now that is why we do everything we do as a church. Because we as a church, we long to help everybody on earth, all over the world, everybody on earth, to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do. And we are not going to be, we won't stop doing what we do until every single person on earth is living life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. Now that's obviously our vision. That's where we want to be. That's what we mean by being a worshiping church that makes Christ known to all of the world. We long for people 
to experience the beauty of who Jesus is. And so a phrase that you're going to hear over the next several years, we long to help people live the legacy. It's a hashtag we're going to use. It's all this kind of stuff, all the cool social media stuff. But the bottom line is, from a dual standpoint, we want everybody, us, the people that we're in, in contact with, people all over the world, we long for them to be able to live the legacy of Jesus Christ. That's the first and foremost. It's a the legacy, the capital T, the definite article there that says Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And so we long for everybody that we come in contact with, everybody that we love, everybody we don't even like, to live this legacy. Now, the dual meaning of that, obviously, is our church name is Legacy. And so we long for this church to bind together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and under his legacy to be the greatest legacy that we can possibly be. Longing for us as a church to be who he's called us to be. And so we do what we do because we want everybody on this planet to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. And so if you get nothing else tonight, please get that one. When you wake up tomorrow morning and if you're going to work tomorrow, first of all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got to go back to work, right? Maybe you worked all this last week. I'm sorry you had to work all this last week, right? But your job tomorrow is to help everybody you come in contact with live life to the fullest. Through Jesus. That's the goal. That's what we want to do. That's what gets us up in the morning. Now, how we do what we do is found in Matthew chapter 22. And this is the one we usually start with. We're going to put the second place on this one. Where we get Jesus' teachings when he's asked, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And in verse 37, Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. To love your neighbor as yourself. All of the Old Testament, all of the law, and all of the prophets hang on these two commandments. They point to these two commandments. And so we boil it down to two simple things. How we help people live the legacy. How we help people to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ is to love God and to love people. Simply. But simply put, we want to love God and we want to love people. And now we kind of get into what? What does that mean for you and me? How does that really play out? Because love God, love people sounds awesome. And it's great. But we also know it's easier said than done. Easier said than done. So here's what we mean. What we do to love God and love people, we do everything through relationships. Relationship with God the Father. Relationship with people here on this earth. Everything we do, we lean into people, we care for people, we love people. Everything that we do hinges on that. This understanding of the love that we have for God, the love that, that he has for us, his love that pours into us and then eventually pours through us into all the people that we get a, a chance to care for on this earth. So we want to love God and love people by doing everything we do through relationships. And then the next one, I love this, this is one of my favorite of our core values, is that we fight. We fight hard the cultural norms. We fight hard the cultural norms on Sundays. We also fight hard the cultural norms in between the Sundays. And so we know there's some church cultural norms within the church community that are not healthy and not good. We're fighting against those really hard. We also know that there's some cultural norms that are between the Sundays that are not a part of the church that are not real great. We're fighting hard against those because we long for every single person to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. We long for them to get this privilege and we know that it requires us to kind of swim upstream in order to make this happen. And so we fight hard. This is what it means to love God and love people. You go countercultural in a lot of things. Again, not easy, but it's very important. And this is what we do in order to accomplish this thing. The next one is we value people over their problems. This is what we do. Man, we value people. We look at people. We know, man, you've got all kinds of issues. There's not a single person sitting in this room that doesn't have all kinds of issues. Every single one of us across this room, we are messed up people, aren't we? I mean, we really are. But the fact is, is that, that God values us. He values us. He sees value in us. And he sees us as the one he created. The one he imagined us to be whenever he breathed life into us. And so therefore, if God sees us that way, he's given us 
the spirit of Jesus Christ in our lives, well, then we are then compelled to do the very same thing to everybody we come in contact with. And so, yeah, we may see a bunch of problems that people have, but we're going to look through those problems to the heart of the person. And our dream and our goal, the way that we help people live life to the fullest, is we're going to see through the mud to the masterpiece that God has there. We're going to see through the problem to the heart. And our hope is we see it like Jesus does. We see their heart the way that God does. And so we value people over their problems. We don't freak out about problems. Problems are just our cue to lean in. That's the way it works for us. We value people over their problems. And then the next one is we give our best every single time. Every single time. When we wake up during the day, we're going to give our very, very best. We know that we want everything that we do to point to the love that we have for God. And that we do that by doing our very best, whether it's work or whether it's parenting or whether it's loving our spouse or whether it's the way we handle our finances, the way we, we do our extracurricular activities, whatever the case is, we want to do our very best in everything that we do. This is how we love God and how we love people. We give our best every time. And then finally, what we do to accomplish this mission that we're on, what we do to accomplish this plan of helping everybody on this earth to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ is we hold all generations highly. We hold all generations as the church. So our babies that are next door in that room right over there, they're the church today. They're not the future of our church. They are our church today, which is why our preschool ministry prays. They worship with them. They spend time with them. They're not just in there doing child care. We don't do child care. We don't do those things. Because they're worshiping. As they hold your babies, they're worshiping and praying over them. The truth that we talk about on a Sunday evening and throughout the year. This is what they're doing. And so we, that's not the future. This section right over here, our teens and our 1620s, they're not the future of our church. They're the church today. And we value them. The middle-aged people in the room... You know, the, 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 well, anyway, I think I'm part of the middle age these days. So, uh, anyway, we're part of the church. We're no longer counting on the church to be our parents' faith. We're not trusting the church to be. We're not just on the coattails of our moms and dads or the grandparents or the generations before us. It's now us. And those of you that are, that are, that are at the place where your parents have gone on and now you find yourself in the greatest generation of our church. The most remarkable, amazing generation. See, nobody's ever done doing ministry until they breathe their last breath on this earth. And that's why we long to learn. We long to be the very best. And it takes all generations for us to do. We need our every generation to be pouring into the next. And we need every generation to be listening to the one that's coming behind and those that are even further behind that. And so we need to listen to our millennials, adults. It's important that we do that. Our Gen Z, we need to learn from them. It's very important that we do that. It's important that you don't try, I just don't even understand what they're talking about. I can't understand their language, so forget it. I'm not even going to try. No, try. And then it's super fun when you learn their language to use it inappropriately. Because then it's awesome. Because then you get the dad. Mom, don't do that. And if you can get Ren to squirm, that's the best one. If you can get him, then anyway, this is, and we hold all generations. Nobody's the past in the church. Nobody's the future of the church. We are the church. And we hold all generations as the church. And so, you know, that's, this is what we do. And so just as that's a, that's a good foundation of why we do what we do and, and how we accomplish helping people live life to the fullest. And then what it is that that takes for us to do that. And so, you know, thinking back through this last year, we saw some pretty cool stories play out this last year. We saw a story of one of our students, Abby. She's here. Abby, wave your hand at us. Let us see you over there. That's Abby back there. So we saw the story that from Abby going from an invite to attendance. We saw her then bring her parents. We saw her, uh, so for then, beyond that, then she finds herself standing on stage. Was it this last Sunday or Sunday before? Sunday before, standing on stage playing keys as a part of leadership within our church. All within this last year. How cool is that? Right? Isn't it wonderful to see 
the next generation leading us. It's important that that happens. And, uh, we love that. Our student ministry's done an amazing job. I uh, uh, highlight this trafficking impact that they've determined that they're going to make an impact in. The sex trade, child trafficking, our students have said, no, 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 not on our watch. And so they've not just said, not on our watch, we're going to just kind of talk about it. They've decided, no, they're going to do some stuff. So they've partnered with the Refuge Ranch in Austin. And not only have they partnered with them and served the Refuge Ranch, but they also are doing is they are raising money every single week. So whenever your children ask you if they can have a dollar or two in order to spend at Lega Brew, give them a buck or two. All right? You're welcome, students. I love y'all. And I'm here for you. So anyway, so give them a little bit because you know what? This last year, our students gave over $700 towards child trafficking this last year. Isn't that great? I love it. I love it because they're literally putting their money where their mouth is. And students, you don't really even have an idea that, that you gained that much in order to make an impact on this earth right here. Lego Brew's gone from sponsoring one child through Compassion International. They now picked up a second child this year. So every single month, they're making sure there's a child on the other side of the world that's getting clean water, food, clothing, education, getting all of those medical uh, supplies that they need in order to live the life that God has called for them to do. And so they've, they've spent, they've given over $858 towards sponsoring children this last year through Compassion International. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, right? So if you look at it, our students are about 1500 bucks at this point right now. And you may sit there and go, man, that's, that's crazy. It is crazy. But then it's so cool. I love seeing our young people say, no, we are going to make a difference. It's not just going to be something we talk about. We're going to actually do something about it. You know, this last year, we also looked at our adult ministry. And, and as we look back at our, our, our different adult ministries, we saw, by your evaluation, we saw uh, our goal was to be balanced in worship, reach, connect, grow, and serve. But across the board, we want to be balanced in those things. And so this last year, we saw worship and we saw grow, grow to where the connect level was and has been since the beginning of Legacy Church. We've always been a, a, a connected church from the very beginning. And so we saw worship and grow elevate to where connect is. We saw serve and we saw reach make a, make a significant move in the same direction. They're not quite where, where we long for them to be, but they made a significant move into that area. And so we're super excited about that because now we're just kind of moving on with that. This, it, it has great implications for what's happening this next year, but the ways that we went about doing that to help serve begin to, to, to rise up, we, we, we're not painting curves to make sure that the fire department, to make sure the EMS could find different people's houses in, in case of an emergency. Also made it to where when the Amazon person needs to find a place, they can find a place in order to drop off the gift or whatever it is that they ordered. You know, stuff like that. But the reality is, it made an impact. You know what, we had, we had, some, we had a family visit our church because we were in their neighborhood painting curves. Isn't that the craziest thing? It's wonderful, though, to see that happening. We also had our, our, our groups, um, our small groups that were serving through Love, Serve, Feed. Uh, they were going and caring for their old friends at the nursing home, reading newspapers and playing dominoes and getting whooped at dominoes. You know, all that good stuff. So anyway, they, they got to go and, and be a part of serving our community. We saw, we saw tons of foster families get meals for their first-time placements because uh, we, had, we had groups that would take meals to them whenever we found out that there was a family in the area, uh, not a part of our church, but sometimes a part of our church, but in the area that had a, a new placement. We want to make sure we know how important that first meal is. So we want to make sure that there was a, just a, just a feel-good meal uh, in that home so that, that child or children, they knew that they were going to be well cared for in the home in which they were entering and so we got a chance to do that. This last week, or this last year, we also got to be a part of some pretty important, pretty huge international works. We were part of the Global 6K through World Vision. Uh, and, and the craziest thing about this, there's some, there's some stuff that kind of blows my mind. And as I look, and as we were there, did you realize that we had the largest representation of any church in the area at the Global 6K for clean water? That's it, pretty amazing to me. Whenever we see, because what that tells me is we as a church, whenever we say we're going to do something, we do it together. And we don't just talk about it. We don't just make sure that, well, if it's convenient for us, we'll do it. And we say, no, we're in. 
And we're all in on this, and we do it together in a really remarkable way. And so it was pretty cool. And out of that, we also uh, embarked on the Matthew 25 challenge, where when, when Jesus says, what you've done to the least of these, you've done it to me, we took that literally, and we began to open our eyes to what's happening all over the world. Uh, to make sure that we can see from a global perspective, not just from an American perspective, what's happening with humanity and the need that is there. And so we took that challenge, and as a result of that, we had a, we had several children that were uh, that were um, um, that were sponsored through World Vision as a result of the Matthew 25 challenge. And so I'm so thankful that these children now, and you guys have them on your refrigerators, and you have you have different uh, people that you're praying for, and you got these names that you hope you're pronouncing correctly, and all that kind of good stuff uh, that, that you're praying for, and, and getting letters from them and everything, and it's a, a beautiful thing. And then, of course, we've just embarked on Team World Vision, which is the half marathon and marathon portion uh, in order to raise money for clean water. And we had 37 people from our church say that they're going to do either a half marathon or a marathon for clean water. That's nuts, everybody. It's crazy awesome. Crazy awesome. But it is an amazing thing that people say, I'm in. And there's some that have decided and realized that I, physically I'm not going to be able to do it, but still raising money. Still raising money. So they're doing it not so for the fame or anything. They're doing it. We have others that are able to finish and they're, they're in process of training. And did you realize that at this point right now, in the greater Austin area, we are still the number one fundraiser of any organization that is raising money for the Team World Vision Half Marathon Marathon for Clean Water. We've raised over $12,000 today for clean water. So somebody who's a math person, right? Somebody who's a math person, help me understand. $50 for Clean Water for Life, how many is that? It's a lot, isn't it? I don't know how many that is, but it's a lot. So, so somebody tell me later on, we can post it or something. That's an amazing, amazing deal. And you guys, you have to also understand, this just shows the generosity of the church because, you know, uh, two weeks ago, we did Gift to Jesus. And you guys know that this is an, an annual tradition that we have, that this money goes for all kinds of things. This money goes for, for people, though, because we value putting dollars into people over, um, over uh, programs and things like that. We put money into people. And our gift to Jesus this last year was $8,874. Isn't that great? It's wonderful. That's worthy of a, a great. Because you have to understand that that right there, that's, that is, um, that's 887 hours of marriage counseling. Do you know that? And we do that. We care for people. We help people. In their times of struggle within their marriage, to go and to get the care that they need. I mean, if you look at it through through that kind of lens, there's tons and tons of opportunity that can be done. You start dividing that by 50, you can see how much clean water. We also look at this, but we know the Lord's going to tell us where, exactly where that money needs to go. That sends a lot of students to student camp. All kinds of things like that. It's a really beautiful thing. So give to Jesus. That's a major, that's a major deal. And then of course we look at our preschool and our kids' ministry, and man, what a what an amazing ministry this is. It's the hardest ministry we have in the church. It's it is it, hands down, it's the hardest. It also contains the most impressionable ages that we have within our body. They are the most impressionable. And so it is it is perhaps the number one most important ministry within our body, preschool ministry. This last year, um, our preschool ministry uh, has been in process of creating something that has been that been brought to my attention that's really beautiful. And, uh, and what, what our preschool ministry has done is they've created, a sense, in, in a sense, a third culture within our, our cultures here. And it's a, a, a really cool thing because we, we have a lot of foster and adoptive children. We have a lot of foster adoptive families. And as a result, what has happened is a lot of these children, when they show up to different places all over the world, they're that family. They're that family that people look at and go, oh my gosh, man, if they could just get their kids to behave, or if they could just make sure their kid doesn't scream, or whatever the case may be. You know, and they're, they're, people just kind of roll their eyes or whatever because they walk in, they drive in with a big bus and you know and there's all these kids start piling out of the cars and everything and they're like big grief that family's here again uh, you know but the cool thing is when when these families show up within our body it's normalized it's a normalized thing and it's a beautiful beautiful thing because here this is what we do 
Not everybody is called to be a foster and adoptive parent, but every single person on the planet is called to care for hurting children. Every single person on the planet is called to care for foster and or adoptive children. And so this is who we are. And this is what we did this last year. And our, our preschool ministry, our kids ministry, in, in partnership with that, has created this third culture where the foster family makeup has become normalized. And yet, it's, I, I can't say enough about how important that is and what that says about us. And that normalization, you know what that led to? That led to, within our body, we had five adoptions this last year. Five different adoptions within our church. Isn't that cool? It's amazing. And that told us a ton of kids. We had five different adoptions this last year. We also saw bio moms here within our body. We saw reunifications that are, that are, that are in process and underway that these happen. Because you know that adoption is not the, the, the sole goal of the foster uh, world, right? I mean, family preservation is number one. For children to be reunified with biological parents is the number one goal of foster care. And we want that to be the number one goal. If that is not capable of happening, that's when we, be, that's when we are who we are as a church uh, and we enter into adoption at that point. But we've seen, we've seen biological parents show up here because they have a relationship with the foster mom or dad or foster mom and dad. No, that's amazing. It's absolutely amazing because, because they know this relationship is taking place. They know that people aren't just trying to take their kids. They know that they, we are for them. We value people over their problems. We value all generations. We long for every single person to live life to the fullest for Jesus Christ. And these are the ways that these things are beginning to show up. And this last year, watching these families be who they are, they could not be who they are if it wasn't for this church. You have to understand how precious and beautiful that is. This is John 10.10. 10. This is who we are, and this is why we do what we do. And this last year, we got to see... Several different people, six different souls redeemed by the blood of Jesus through salvation. This is a, an amazing thing. Whenever we see people go from death to life, when we see people go from this seeming feeling maybe about themselves that they are nothing to where they realize they are more than just something, more than just something to Jesus, they are everything. They are, he loves them so much that he would lay his life down for them. And so, y'all, what I thought we would do this evening is we would just take this next few minutes. We're not going to take a long time, but just the next few minutes. I'd like for us just to kind of, kind of circle up. Just within the room here, let's just circle up. And, and if you're visiting tonight, man, what a great night for you to be here. I'm so thankful that you're here. You get to pray with us. Just thank God for stuff. You had no idea what's happening. And we're just really glad that you're here. And so if you would just help us to thank God, and we just thank God together. And so what we'll do is just over the next couple of minutes, and so we're going to kind of have to move quickly. So just over the next couple of minutes, if we'll just circle up and just pick something, just kind of popcorn style across the way, just pick something and just say, God, thank you for our foster care. Thank you for our priesthood ministry. Thank you for uh, the, the dollars for, for clean water. Thank you for the life change through compassion or world vision. Thank you for uh, what our families have, have been doing this last year, whatever the case may be. And so you just, we're just going to take just a few minutes. I think it's important that we look back and we go, thank you, Lord, for what you did this last year. Can we pray together and do that? Man, Lord, the way that you have moved through this body this last year has been beautiful. And we thank you for it. But I pray that you will, man, that you will take us where you long for us to go this next year. Lord, we will get a chance to just, in one year from now, look back at what's happening right here. Locally, right here, the hearts that have been changed, the lives that have been changed. And Father, we thank you for what happened this last year. And we're looking forward to what's happening in heaven. We pray through the name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all just kind of stay where you are and just kind of turn around and look at me. You can sit down where you are because we're going to pray again here in just a second. But just turn around and look at me because that's what happened locally. And so what, what I did want to take just a moment tonight and talk about what happened internationally this last year as well. Because Little Old Legacy Church was in three different countries this last year. And, uh, and I'm so thankful uh, for, for our, our Kenya team that completed our fifth 
year working with the, the churches there. Yeah. Amazing. We went from went from one church uh, the first year, and then within a couple of years after that, we were at two churches, and then this last year, we were with, with how many churches this last year? 13 churches this last year that we worked with well, uh, in Kenya. Isn't that awesome? It is so amazing, so amazing. We also had Haiti. Uh, we began our first year of a five-year plan with Haiti uh, to where uh, we're working with them, putting on a kids' camp, uh, following in the footsteps of our Kenyan team, uh, and then working that same kind of plan with, with our Haitian brothers and sisters. And, uh, and so we began the first year of a five-year plan there. This last year, uh, we completed our ninth year working with our Indian brothers and sisters. Isn't that cool? Nine years we've been working with them. Amazing, amazing. So thankful for Dipteman and the ministry that is here. And, and our crawl campus just just gave uh, all of the local pastors that Dipteman works with, just, just clothed them with new clothing for Christmas. And, uh, and was able to provide the ability for them to be able to get together and gather together uh, as pastors praying together for India and uh, and, and the area and, and where they are they are at work and it's just it's something that doesn't happen a whole lot and so it was a beautiful thing for that to happen and so so Thrall is doing a remarkable work as well and so and that man gosh this is so awesome I love it and so this last year uh, we've done some numbers and basically this last year. Um, the, our international impact, if you put it in a dollar figure, our international impact, we've, we've put $47,000 into international mission work this last year. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? And the cool thing is, is that we believe with all of our hearts, we're not just paying for people to go on mission vacations. Right? Because that's a thing. The mission vacation is a thing. We don't go on vacation to Kenya. We don't go on vacation to India. We don't go on vacation to Haiti. We are on mission. And we are there for a period of time. And then we're going to go somewhere else because we're going to trust that God's going to do what he needs to do there. Raising up the leaders that need to happen there. Because we're not there just to paint a blue wall to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. Okay? We're not there to do construction just to make ourselves feel like we're doing something. That's not what we do. We're there for life change. And we're there for our Haitian brothers and sisters and Kenyan brothers and sisters and Indian brothers and sisters to be the ones doing the ministry while we cheer them on. That's what it's about, because it's for them. So this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so this is why we look at this, we think about this last year, we think about locally, we think about internationally, and we look at it through this lens, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, 20 through 21 says this, Now to him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask or even imagine, According to the power that works in us, Jesus, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so we know that this is the impact that we can see. Some of the things we've talked about, and there's far more than what I've talked about locally and globally. But these are the things that we can see that we can just make noteworthy tonight for us to say thank you to God and what he did this last year. And then, of course, when we look to what's coming. We look and we think, gosh, this is the this is our 10 year anniversary coming up uh, this in two Sundays, right? 10 years as a church. What's God going to do in the next 10 years? It's been beautiful to see what He's done over the last last 10 years, and so we look and we think, okay, our whole goal we want people to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ, and so what we want in 2020 is we want to begin the next five years. We want to begin the next 10 year vision. And next Sunday, we're going to be talking about what the next five and ten years look like for us as a church. But I thought it'd be fun to get a little sneak peek. I thought it'd be fun to just kind of, kind of get, the, get the ball rolling together. And so one of the things we want to work really, really hard on over the next year specifically, but of course within the next ten years, we want to work really hard at growing in our non-believing friendships. We want to work really hard at developing friendships with people that don't know Jesus. Not just so they'll pray a prayer of salvation. But because we want to befriend people. We want to be Jesus to this world. We want people to get to live life to the fullest. And we long to be for people. Rather than against what they do. And so we want to work hard at growing in non-believing friendships. You know that our goal from day one as a church. Has been to have 30% of our attendance on a Sunday gathering. To be mature believers or maturing believers. 30%, and I know you math folks are going to be like, Danny, that's not right. It's 33 and a third. Anyway, so 
33 and a third uh, of, our, of, our, of people who attend are maturing believers. 30% are, um, are new or new again to the church, right? And then to have 30%, a third of our gathering to not know Jesus. Now we're a far cry from that step. But we're going to start working hard towards that. We want to work hard towards that. In this next year, we're going to begin something that's fairly unique to the church world. And that is, when we incorporated Legacy Church Ministries, our Legacy Church, we incorporated it as Legacy Church Ministries. The reason we incorporated it as Legacy Church Ministries is we've always known that we dream that Legacy would not just be a church. That legacy would be far more than a church. The church would drive everything that we do, but we long for us to have different ministries or different things underneath the umbrella of ministry that is Legacy Church Ministries. And so this next year, we're going to begin assembling the team for our Lega businesses. And so these would be the, the businesses that we plan to launch over the next five to ten years that will impact our community. And so our entrepreneurs, our business-minded people, those guys, are, we're going to start getting together and we're going to start talking through what is it that God longs to do underneath the Legacy Church Ministries umbrella. Because the church at this point now, we're uh, in a place where we can begin not just making Sundays happen. You know, there for the first several years we've tried to make Sundays happen. We're at the place now where Sundays are happening. We're going to be gathering the saints for worship. And it's going to drive mission, vision, values of everything that we do. But it's time now to branch into what Legacy Church Ministries, where we believe with all of our heart, God put on our minds when he said it's time to start this new work. And so that begins this next year. And so we're looking forward to those Lego businesses and explaining a little bit more about what that looks like. Uh, and then, of course, we're going we're gonna to be, be pushing hard towards salvation. We are going to be pushing hard. Uh, now, we're not, we're not leveraging relationships just to get people to pray a prayer and pad numbers and all that kind of thing. That's not it at all. We genuinely long for people to live life to the fullest. We know the only way people live life to the fullest is through Jesus Christ. And so we're going to befriend, we're going to hope, we're going to pray, we're going to ask God to turn hearts. And we're not going to try to hard sell anybody on salvation. In fact, we're probably going to negative sell them on it a bit um, because people need to know the cost of discipleship. And so then from there, we're going to ask God for, for him to turn hearts uh, towards him. And so here's, here's what, the, what this basically culminates in. Why do these things? Why businesses? Why, why uh, the non-believing friendships? Why this goal of 30, 30, 30? Why this thing? Why this live the legacy, Danny? Why this thing? And here's, here's what it culminates in. We know that, that Jesus met us, most of us in this room, in a time of need. And that's what drew our hearts to him. And in that time of need, God was, was near. And he, he likely ministered to us, showed how close he was to us, through somebody in that moment. And we know that that's what he longs for us to do in people's lives. And so what we want to do is we want to become the very best, not just church, we want to become the very best at caring for people in their time of crisis. We want to lead the way. We want to become the very best at caring for people in their time of crisis. That's why we long for a third of our congregation on a Sunday evening to not know Jesus because they're, they're expecting this hope that they've been experiencing with you in your friendships with them throughout the week. They're experiencing these things because they're in a time of crisis and they need to hear the hope of the gospel. And so they decide to show up. This is why we, divide, we develop these businesses so that we can employ people in their time of need. We begin to de develop these businesses so that the businesses can benefit by giving away services for people in their time of need. And so it's important because we don't want to just talk about caring for people. We don't want to just tell people, we're praying for you. We're here. Let me know if you need something. That's not what we want to do. It's people over their problems. It's everything through relationships. When times call for caring, we know how to lean in. And that's who God longs for us to be. The very best at caring for people in their time of crisis because we know that in that moment, that's when God says, let me show you a new way to live life. Let me show you what it means to live life the way I dream 
for you to be able to live. I have one story that we'll finish up for this evening. Just a story to kind of paint a picture for us as we step into next week. Carrie Deanna, who is one of our, uh, our new um, preschool leadership team uh, folks, a few weeks ago, actually about a month ago, she was in her car and she was taking one of her kids to school. And as she dropped her kid off from school, she went to a gas station and she was going to put some gas in the car and everything and she just noticed that there was a car that was pulled over and, uh, and, and there was a police officer that was there and she could tell that the person was having a hard time. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was a white police officer, uh, it was a, uh, a person of color uh, that was in the car and she just decided she was going to sit and just, just kind of watch and, and just kind of see what was going on. And everything was fine, and everything was good. The, the police officer finished the ticket, and finished everything, and then and then went on uh, his way. Uh, and, and, and Carrie just noticed, though, that she just sat there. You know, just sat there quietly in her car. And so Carrie, you know, had the, uh, I don't know, she just did the, the spurring on of the Lord just said, you need to go check on her, just go, go see. And so she went over to the car, she knocked on the window, and she just asked, she just said, I just want you to know, I just... I just kind of watched everything. I just want to make sure you're okay. And, uh, and, and this is not a, yeah, anyway, so she just want to make sure that you're okay. And, and, and bottom line is, is that the woman's name was Evie. And she recently uh, had moved to the area. Uh, she's in a, a tough relationship and was having some financial difficulty and wasn't able to get her car's registration taken care of. And so um, obviously registration was out. So it was deserving of a ticket. And so she got that ticket, but she wasn't quite sure how she was going to be able to pay for it. She couldn't drive the car until she got the thing paid for. And so Carrie, in this moment, she just said, well, let's go take care of these things. And, and if you guys know Carrie Deanna, she's not exactly a woman who's experiencing a really easy life in her home. Uh, she's living a pretty tough life herself in her own home. But she took this moment to take time in a busy schedule to watch, to notice a need, to lean in, to care for and she and Evie have been com having conversation. They've been developing a relationship. She's been welcoming them to the area. She's been caring for her in a really beautiful way. And, and, it's, and, and we're not quite sure how that story is going to play out, but, but that's the idea. That's the idea of, of what we do. Everything through relationships. People over their problems. You know, it's, it's, we're going to do the very best we can every single time we do whatever it is that we're going to do. We're going to fight the cultural norms which are hurry, 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 hurry. Don't get involved in anybody's life because you never know how that's going to play out. You don't know how risky it is. You don't know how any of these things. You know, and valuing all the generations. I mean, it's just, this is how it all plays out. And so, so I tell you that story just simply to say, you know, this is a beautiful moment, a beautiful story of where one of our people took time to just pause, watch, lean in, give care, Helped in a way that didn't hurt and didn't cripple, but helped in a way that helped the person be able to get where they need to go and then continue relationship on the other side, helping welcome to the area. It's going to be interesting to see how that relationship plays out, but it's an important one for us to see and understand. So guys and gals, this is what I'm talking about. We want to live the legacy. We want to care for people in their time of need. We want to lean in the way that we've talked about for years and years and years. And so that's it. And so as we look at this, what I thought we would do just in the end here is that we would just dream a bit. What does that look like for you? What would it look like for you to open your eyes to something beyond what your normal day-to-day -day operation is and what how God might ask you to enter into somebody's world that you might really rather not enter into? And what would it mean for you to grow in non-believing friendships? What would it mean for you to be in a room where we have a third of our room that is filled with people that don't know Jesus? It's going to change the room. What does it mean? Are you one of the maturing third? Are you in the, in the, in the piece of the pie where you're new to the faith or new again to the faith? Where do you stand in this? And what does it mean for you to lead somebody to Jesus Christ by way of salvation. What does that mean for you? And so these are all beautiful things for us to think about and for, for us to, to, to work together. And what does it mean for us as a church to become the very best at caring for people 
in their time of crisis. And so I thought we would just kind of finish up this time this evening praying and asking God, what do you want, God? What do you want for me? And what do you want for this church? And whether, wherever you are, whatever you want, man, let's just take a moment and let's just pray. And let's just dream together a little bit. And let's dream together about what this next year can hold. Let's pray to the church. Oh, Lord, we know that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know the thief longs to destroy every life on this planet. We are so thankful, Lord, that you sent Jesus and that he has come so that every single person may have life and may have life to the fullest measure. Father, I pray that, that you will help us to love you that you will help us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. Lord, I pray that you will help us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Father, I pray that as we sit here this evening and we hear words like, now to you who are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. According to the power that works within us, to you, Lord, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Lord, we pray and we want you to do through us this next year all that you dream of doing. And Lord, I pray that you help us tonight that as we sit here in this this Sunday evening worship experience. That we look at this and we go, man, Lord, you are so worthy of praise. And we can filter what's happened and we can see what you did through us in order to make the things we've talked about happen. And then, Lord, we can dream together and think, what do you want to do through me this next year? And in what ways do you want to use me that I'm not deserving of you using me, but, but you long to, to flow through me to care for people? And so, Lord, I pray that you help us. Help us every day that we would wake up and we would know that our role is to help people to live life to the fullest through Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we, as we spend time together this next week as families and as friends, and we look forward to the things to come, Lord, I pray that you'll go ahead and start just bringing all the hearts together, all the minds together, all the thoughts, everything of what needs to happen this next year. And Lord, that you begin to put the meat on the bones of what we've talked about. And Lord, as we dream the next five years, as we dream the next 10 years, Lord, you help us to work hard at building those friendships with people that don't know you. Spending time with folks that we may not have a whole lot in common, but we can always find something. Lord, we know that there's people this next year that they're going to have a moment of crisis. And in that moment of crisis, you are going to pick us to be there. And so, Lord, will you go ahead and just get us ready for the inconvenience? Will you go ahead and just get us ready for the time that's coming so that we can say yes to you and say, I'm in. I'm ready. And Lord, I pray that you will grow us in the way that we bring joy to people who don't know you. Lord, we long to live a legacy ourselves. Lord, I pray that you would help our hearts to break when we see people not living the legacy. A legacy that you sent Jesus to this earth to die. You sent Jesus to this earth as a baby to turn the world upside down. So Lord, help us to, to keep on doing it so that people can live. So that people, in that moment, they get to experience the fullness of Jesus Christ. And he paint a picture for how he longs for their life to be. Lord, help us, because we need you. And man, Lord, we sure are thankful for all that you have in store coming. So Lord, we thank you for this year, and we look forward to 2020. We pray it through the name of Jesus. Amen.